So the 4.7 lecture, we're dealing with the inverse trig functions. And we want to remember that uh, for an inverse function, for an, a function to have an inverse, it needs to first be one-to-one. -one. So that means it would have to pass the horizontal line test. It also should be a function, so that should pass the vertical line test also. So if I look at a sine curve, which is kind of our basic sine curve that's doing something like this. And we have 0, i over 2, pi, kind of like this. Uh, it definitely would not pass the horizontal line test. The horizontal line would hit twice, so it does not have an inverse. But we've been hitting the inverse button on our calculator a lot uh, last couple chapters here, so it, it should. And so if I extend this backwards, we would also have one going like this. That's also a sine curve. And this would be negative pi over 2, and this would be negative pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight. Um, I'm going to go from here to here. So we're going to do this little shape right here. If we restrict the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, uh, it can have an inverse now. It'll pass the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. By doing that, if I restrict the domain, remember that it goes up to 1 and down to negative 1. So those are my domain numbers. Well, those become the range, because when you do an inverse range domain flip-flop, and the pi over 2, the pi over 2 becomes the outputs y values. And so if I graph this thing, it's going to look similar to, put a dot there and a dot there, it's going to kind of have a shape similar to this. And so what you notice is that um, the outputs on the unit circle, here's negative pi over 2 or negative 90, go this way to 0 and go this way to positive 90 or positive pi over 2. So I would shade this area, quadrants 1 to quadrants 4. So when you hit the inverse sign button, it can only produce angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, which include the quadrants 4 and 1. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm going to just show you a page. So you can see here with the cosine curve, if we just concern ourselves with this part of the curve, restrict it from 0 to pi, that is the input. And so then uh, 0 to pi becomes our outputs. So uh, only the top half of the circle. And the same thing happens for tangent here. You can only do the quadrants 1 and 4 when you're doing arc tangent. And it all has to do with restricted domain. We just want to do 1s right here. That goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So when you flip it, that becomes your outputs. Um, so now in these problems, what we're going to do is find a value of possible, the exact value for each. Uh, so we should recognize negative one half. And what this is asking is what angle produces negative one half? So I come over here uh, to my unit circle. Here's where sine is negative one half, and here's where sine is negative one half. But remember, arc sine only produces answers in quadrants one or four. So it's going to produce this angle. Now, if you type it into your calculator, you're not getting 330 because, remember, it goes from negative 90 to 0. So this is negative 30. Uh, 
negative 30 degrees or negative pi over 6. You can do either one. Again, when you're working with inverse sine, it only produces answers in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4. So go over to the unit circle again. We're looking for root 3 over 2. What angle produces root 3 over 2? Well, my sine is root 3 over 2 right here. It's also root 3 over 2 right here. <clears throat> and so it's going to give me 60 degrees. Can't produce this one. It's going to give me this one. All right, I'm going to pause it now. I want you to do D right here. Do D and come back and look at the answer. Pause now. Your answer is negative pi over 3. So remember how this works. We're looking for negative root 3 over 2. So the second number is negative root 3 over 2 down here at 240 and down here at 300. Only in quadrants 1 or 4. Arc sine only produces answers over here. So it's really this location. But negative 90 to 0 is how we restricted the domain and range on the very beginning. So this is really negative 60. Or negative pi over 3. Okay, let's do... Let's do F and H with cosines to see how you're doing. Let's just do this one as cosine to the negative 1 of 1 half. Now one thing I forgot to mention is that arc, cosine, and cosine to the inverse mean the same thing. It's easier when people type to type arc cosine. It's just quicker. To try to do the superscript notation is a little bit longer. So sometimes we use cosine to the negative 1. Sometimes we use arc cosine. Same thing. So find Find these two values and check your answer. So pause the video now. Okay, so arc cosine root 2 over 2. Uh, only pi over 4 there. So how is that working? If I go over to the unit circle, cosine is root 2 over 2 here. It's also root 2 over 2 right here. So 315 degrees or 45 degrees. Well, arc cosine only produces answers in the top half of the circle. So this is the answer I need, and it's 45 degrees or pi over 4. One half, we said. So again, where is your cosine? One half. Well, cosine is one half at 300 degrees and at 60 degrees. Right there, the first number in the order pair. But our cosine only produces answers up here, so it's going to kick out the 60 or pi over 3. Now, let's look at uh, C here. When you try to do 2, you're going to get an error in domain, so there's no solution. But why is that happening? That's because our graph, right, that did something like this, The outputs were between uh, negative 1 and 1, so now when I did the inverse, so the inverse sign, the domain goes from negative 1 to 1, and 2 is clearly outside negative 1 to 1, so you can't use it. The same thing happens with root 3, so for instance, if I go to my calculator and I try to do uh, inverse cosine, of the square root, it's an error domain. It tells me that it's outside of the range. So the last one, I've been really trying to get people to memorize. Tangent of 30 is root 3 over 3. Tangent of 45 is 1 tangent of 60 is root 3. So, whoops. So tangent of 30 is root 3 over 3, tangent of 45 is 1, tangent of 60 is root 3. Well, they're talking about where is tangent 1? Well, that's going to be positive, so 
in this quadrant or this quadrant. So what are the 45s in quadrants 1 and 3? Well, remember, inverse tangent is similar to sine that it only produces answers over here. So this one won't work. So what's the 45 in quadrant 1? 45 or pi over 4. All right, for these four, um, just type them into your calculator. Let's just also, let's set our calculator to radian, radian mode. So type these into radians, and then come back and see what the answers are. Pause it now. So if you round off to four decimals, these are the four answers. Again, our cosine of two, that's going to be more than one. So that won't fit the domain. And then 1.9. All right, the last page we're doing some what we call composite functions. And anything that's a number on the unit circle, you should use your unit circle for. So if you want to have one handy or make one quick, do so. But I'm first going to start by finding the sine of 5 pi over 3. So on the unit circle, 5 pi over 3 is right here. Sine is the second number, so I'm going to write down negative but 3 over 2. negative root 3 over 2. Now this is asking me to do the inverse sine of that. So what angles produce negative root 3 over 2? So again, I go over here. Negative root 3 over 2 is right here and right here. Well, arc sine can't produce anything in quadrant 3. It's only going to do 1 or 4, so it's going to give me this one. But don't write down 300. Let's do negative 60 because remember it's it's between negative 90 and 0. So my final answer would be negative 60 degrees or negative pi over 3. If somebody thinks, <clears throat> oh, it's the inverse property, and they just cross off the sin, arc sine and sine and write down pi power 3, they're technically wrong. All right, tangent of 7 pi over 4. Well, that's a 45 degree angle in quadrant 4. That means it's 1 or negative 1. In this case, tangent's negative. Tangent's negative in quadrant 4, so this is negative 1. Now I do the inverse cosine of that. Well, the only place, if you look on the unit circle, the only place where cosine is negative 1 is at 180 degrees. So 180 degrees or pi. I'm going to now have you do I'm going to have you try 6 and 7. So go look at 6 and 7, see if you can figure them out. They kind of look what we did and then I'll put the answers in. Pause the video now. All right, so 5 pi over 6 sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. So you can write that down. Now, what angle produces one half for your sign? So again, go back to your circle. It's one half here, and it's one half here. Well, which one can arc sine produce? Arc sine only produces answers over here on the right hand side, so it must be 30 degrees. or pi over 6. So now I'm going to do tangent of negative 4 pi over 3. So hopefully you caught that. Remember, 4 pi over 3 is 240 degrees, but we're going negative. So I start at 0, or the 360, and I go backwards 180 and another 60. So I go backwards 240 degrees. This is where I land. What is the tangent here? You could do sine over cosine, or know that it's negative root 3 in the second quadrant there, and it's a 60. You remember, this will be a quadrant to 60 degree angle. Now you do the inverse tangent. Well, I know that root 3s are 60 degrees. So this is telling me 
that I have a 60 in quadrant 2 or in quadrant 4 because that's where tangent's negative, negative root 3. So which one can arc sine produce, or arc tangent, I mean? Arc tangent only produces answers in 1 and 4. So what's the 60 in quadrant 4? Well, we're just going to go backwards 60. So let's call it negative 60 degrees or negative pi over 3 in the location of 300, but we call it negative 60 or negative pi over 3. All right, so how about this one? If I do uh, example 3, where is your sine negative root 3 over 2? So again, sine is negative root 3 over 2 down here and down here. Which one will arc sine produce? Only this one, because we're in quadrants 1 or 4. So I, instead of 300, I would say negative 60. Well, now it's reading if the co what's the cosine of negative 60. So you go back to that location right here. This is negative 60. So we're right here. My cosine is 1 half. And you could type that into your calculator right now and verify that you get 1 half. The last two problems, a little bit different, and that's because the numbers that you see here, like 2 thirds and negative 3 fifths, those are not numbers that would be on the unit circle. So we're going to have to do something a little different. So first, where does arc cosine produce answers? Well, arc cosine produces answers in the top two quadrants. So I may draw my triangle in one of those quadrants. Then this whole thing right there, that can be set equal to y. So cosine inverse of 2 thirds. If I cosine on both sides here, I get y is equal to, uh, sorry, cosine both sides, I get cosine of y is equal to 2 thirds. Now, the other question I'm going to answer is right here. Where is cosine positive? Well, cosine is po the x, so it's positive on the right-hand side of the graph. So I'm going to draw a triangle out from the origin vertically to my x-axis. I'm going to call this angle y. Cosine is adjacent to hypotenuse 3. If the adjacent is 2 and the hypotenuse is 3, I square them both. And then I say 9 minus 4 is 5, so my missing side is the square root of 5, just using the simple Pythagorean theorem. Now at the end of this problem, we can go ahead and answer the question, what is the tangent? Now remember, this whole thing right here is y, so I'm going to replace it. What is the tangent of y? And I just use my triangle. Opposite over adjacent, so root 5 over 2. If you want a chance to do uh, example 5 on your own, do so. Pause it now. Otherwise, I'm going to go through it. So, All right, so we do the same thing. I would start by asking the question, where does arc sine produce answers? 1 and 4. Then I set it equal to a variable. Do the sine on both sides, and I get the sine of y equals negative 3 fifths. So the second question is, where is sine negative? Well, sine is negative down in the bottom because it's your y value. So I'm going to draw a triangle in quadrant 4, call it y. Sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. Now look at your drawings because sometimes you can mess things up, but there's a negative sign and I'm going to assign the negative to the side going down. The hypotenuse is always positive. And then hopefully you notice this is what we call a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 5 squared is 25, negative 3 squared is 9, and 25 minus 9 is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. So my missing side was 4. So the final question is, 
right here, what's the cosine of that triangle? And the adjacent over hypotenuse is our answer. So 